Banff is a small town located inside of Banff National Park inside of Alberta, Canada. I've had the pleasure of staying there for almost a month over the past couple of months. And while I was there, I was able to stay at a bunch of different hotels. So in this video, I wanted to give a review of all of the different hotels that I stayed at in case you wanted to go there in the winter to go snowboarding or just sightseeing. It's also really great in the summer. There's tons of things to do because it's surrounded by mountains. There's lots of hiking, sightseeing. There's just tons of really cool things to do outdoors. Doors. So first, let's get started with just a little overview of what Banff is. It's a town. This is the entire town. It's pretty small, honestly. It's only 4.7 kilometers squared or 1.84 square miles. The first night that I was here, I got there pretty late and I was going to stay at the Bowview Lodge. This is what it looked like the night that I arrived. When walking in, you're greeted with a couple of seats, a TV, and an open lobby. If you go directly to your right as you walk in the door, that's where you'll check in. So I just checked in real quick. They had umbrellas that you could use if you didn't have an umbrella and it was raining outside, so that's pretty nice. My room was on the first floor. The room that I stayed in was room 109. It was the first hotel room right to the left as you walked into the lobby. Here's what it looked like walking inside. So we got a hallway, here's the shower room. Everything's super nice, all glass shower. And then here is the washroom. And then here's the rest of the room. It's super spacious. It had two sofas and it had two queen beds. It had a fridge, which is going to be important later, as you'll see. It had a sink out here. It had a microwave. It had silverware, everything that you could need. Here's another look at that shower room. And then here's some views of what it looked like the next morning when I woke up. This one was the view as soon as I walked outside of the hotel. And then this was on my way to Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons is actually really close. It's only five minutes of a walk away from the hotel. It's only about 300 meters. And then IGA is also five minutes away and that one's only 400 meters. Here's a nice look of the Bow River that's right behind the Bowview Lodge. Beautiful turquoise water and there's a nice little trail that you can walk up. The next day I went to go stay at Irwin's Mountain Inn. This is what it looks like on the outside and here's what the room looked like on the inside. I stayed on the top floor and it has pretty much all of the amenities that you're going to need. It has a mini fridge, a sink, a coffee maker, a microwave. Here's a look at the bathroom. It does have shampoo, conditioner, and body wash already included in the room. Here's a look at the sink that's right off of the bathroom. They do provide hand soap and lotion as well. Here is a view outside of the hotel room and looking up Banff Street. Along with this stay, on the left you can see that there's three day transit passes. These are for the buses inside of Banff, so you don't have to pay for bus transportation unless it's like the buses like the 8X or anything like that that's going outside of Banff. Here's a look at the hot tub that's down in the lobby behind where you check in. They also do have this restaurant called El Toro that I decided to go to because I saw that they had this three course dinner for $39. It had red pepper soup or Caesar salad, a triple A six ounce strip loin steak served with seasonal vegetables and roasted potato, and then also a house made chocolate mousse for dessert. And then calamari just as an appetizer as well. Here's what the inside of the restaurant looks like. And then this is where I was sitting. All right, so next up we have the Fox Hotel. This is what it looked like from the outside when I was getting ready to go walk over to it. As you can see, it's pretty close to uh, Irwin's Mountain Inn. It's within walking distance to downtown if you wanted to. Here's a better look at the entrance of the building. And after checking in, I was going to my room and saw this steamy circle. I didn't know what it was at the time but look down inside of it and it's a sauna or it's a, it's a hot tub essentially. So here's the room that I stayed in. It was 207. Here's a nice little view that I had from outside looking out from the room. And then here's the room. So I'll be completely honest. This wasn't my favorite at all. This was actually my least favorite place to stay, although I think it was the most expensive. There's no refrigerator. They do have a coffee maker. It's pretty small. Here's the bathroom. I couldn't figure out how to turn the light on for a while. It's actually behind the door on the left right there. It's not this switch at all. 
And then this door, I tried to open it, but it's actually like joined rooms. So that would be how you get into the other room if you did decide to get like, have somebody else stay on the other side and you wanted to open up the rooms between your between yourselves. Here's a look at that sauna or like hot tub that's down inside. It has waterfalls. It's super steamy inside of there. It's actually the most beautiful one that I've seen. And if you go a little bit behind the entrance of where you walk in there, there's a sauna, a dry sauna. The Fox Hotel, there's a Chili's inside of it. So I, of course, had to get some Chili's, get some drinks. Here's their loaded nachos. Not too bad, but it was like $15 for that. It's here mostly for the drinks, so got some margaritas and some beer. I also got a crispy chicken burger with french fries and a grilled chicken burger with french fries. And then here is the sampler plate. Um, I don't exactly remember what it is, but you got to choose what items you wanted. So I got some, uh, this was another day, I got some mini sliders, some barbecue boneless wings, some chicken tenders. And then on the left, there is fajitas. There's chicken and beef fajitas with some rice, some peppers, some onions, and then there's some pico and black beans in that bowl. Here's another look at the slider. It wasn't that good. It was it was pretty small, but it was super dry. There was like no sauce on it at all. Um, so if you do get it, just put some sauce or ketchup on it or something. Next up, we have the Red Carpet Inn. This one is right next door to Irwin's Mountain Inn. I stayed in room 108. Here's a nice look at the room. It's not too spacious, but it's clean. If you are looking for an ironing board, it's in the bottom drawer of the dresser. This also did have soap included in it, the shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. It's um, pretty much the same for all of these hotels. They all use the Rocky Mountain Soap Company soaps. Here's a look at the bathroom, nice and clean. Here's the nice little view looking out that little window. Right after checking in, I thought it'd be a good idea to go to the hot tub. So went to the hot tub. Here's a look at it before jumping in, before turning the jets on, and a little view of what you can see while looking outside while sitting in the hot tub. Right next door to this is the Beaver Hostel. They have happy hours on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And then every single day they have happy hour between 4 and 6 p.m. I went here, I believe it was on a Tuesday, got a couple of beers just because they were cheap. Here's a look at the entrance and where you would go if you were checking in. You would just go to that desk right there and tell them that you want to check in. If you're there to drink, then the bar is right there to your right. Here's a look at their food menu and their drink menu. Next up we have the ptarmigan. This one is more closely to downtown Banff. It's way closer to the IGA, which is the, the store there. It's kind of like a Safeway. Here's another look at the entrance. Here's what the lobby looks like. So I got all checked in and then had to walk through tons of hallways. It seemed like really long hallways to be able to get to my room, but eventually found room number 242. I forgot to take a video of this one, but here's a look at the room. There is two beds. It also has a balcony, which is really nice with some chairs out there. So you could totally go outside and enjoy the weather if it was nice. It was really cold when I was there. So wasn't really gonna enjoy that too much. Here's just the towels in the bathroom and that same soap again and a look at the sink. It was really clean. I really like this hotel and I really like the location of it. Here's a look at the inside of the hotel, looking down towards the meatball restaurant. I didn't get a chance to go to the meatball restaurant, and I'm not really a huge fan of Italian food, but if you are a fan of Italian food, I've heard that's really great. Next, I wanted to go check out the hot tubs. They had the gym for some reason in the same room as the hot tubs and sauna. So if you are looking to go to the gym or anything, maybe just wear some swimming trunks and totally work out, go to the sauna, jump in the hot tub. So here's how to start the sauna. This is the dry sauna and they also did have a wet sauna. So that was really cool. And then here's the how to turn on the hot tubs. 
When I was there, only one of the hot tubs turned on for some reason, so this was the one that I was going to go in. Next up, we have the Rundlestone Lodge. This one is pretty far away from downtown if you don't want to walk too far, but you can always take a bus. There's a bus stop right there where that video begins. So here's a look of walking into the entrance. I got all checked in and here's a nice first look at the hotel room. Really clean. I was checking in kind of early. Uh, they only had one room available and it unfortunately didn't have the balcony, but I didn't expect it to look like this. Um, so that was kind of disappointing that it is over here, like looking at the pool. Um, that was not exactly what I thought that a hotel room would have. Here's a look at the gym that they had. And then here's the pool. In the back left, there is a hot tub, but that was under construction at this time. So I wasn't able to try it out or give it a rating. Next up, there is the Dorothy Hotel or the Dorothy Motel. This one is the furthest hotel all the way back towards like the wilderness. Here's a nice look of it walking up to it. So when I got here, I saw that there was a sign that said that you had to check in at the Caribou Lodge. So I had to walk back over to the Caribou Lodge, get all checked in there, and then walk back to the Dorothy Motel to check in. I checked into room 201, so it was this room right here on the corner of the building. Here's a first look at the hotel room. Super spacious, love the tall ceilings. There's a mini fridge, a microwave, a coffee maker. They have cups. This bathroom is really, really nice. I love the glass and everything and it's pretty open. And the best thing about it is that the floors were heated inside of the bathroom. So no cold feet getting out of the shower or first thing in the morning. Here's a nice view that I got from the hotel room. Here's just a view of the courtyard. This is a bus stop on, I was going down to Canmore. It's the next city like south of Banff. I had to go check out the A&W that was there. So got myself some chicken burgers again. Here's a view of it at night. And that's pretty much every single hotel that I stayed at there. So starting in order of my least favorite to my favorite, we're gonna start with the Fox Hotel. A couple of bad things about this is that there's no fridge, there's no microwave, there's no air conditioning inside of the unit. The lighting in there was pretty terrible. It's just kind of outdated. I'm not gonna really hold this against them, but our card reader like batteries failed when I was there. So we were like locked out for a couple of hours and had to wait, like not like a couple of hours, like we were, I went out to eat at Chili's, but I didn't know that like, it was that the reader was dead because our cards weren't working. It was just like flashing. So I had to wait for maintenance to come and do that. They took care of it like really quickly after I brought it to their attention. It was probably only like, 10 minutes and it was fixed so no big deal but it was like something that did pop up a couple of good things about it is the location the best like hot tubs that are there so that's really really nice it's super clean it's really cool down inside of the hot tub also bonus points for having a chilies inside of the hotel but still this was my least favorite by far just because of the fridge, lack of air conditioning, lighting. Oh, the internet was absolutely terrible too. I was working from home at the time and I could barely do anything because the Wi-Fi was absolutely abysmal. The next best would be the Rundlestone Lodge. This one, although it was spacious and everything and I could have gotten a better room if I waited like another three or four hours to check in, but the room that I got, it didn't really seem all that great. It was on the second floor. It had that view of the pool. So it was kind of noisy when there were people in the pool. Also the fact that the hot tub wasn't working when I was there, that was kind of disappointing. But a couple of benefits of it, it did have a fridge. A negative is that it didn't have a microwave. I had to go down to the lobby to use the microwave if I wanted to be able to microwave anything. And I purposely took off the do not disturb sign off the door handle um, because I wanted them to come change the bed sheets because I was there for about five days. And one day they like didn't even come to my room. So I had to call down and ask for them to come change the sheets. So that's kind of a little bit awkward. It was just a little bit inconvenient. So I'll dock them some points for that too, but it's not as bad as the Fox Hotel. Although there is no air conditioning inside of the Rundlestone as well, but I went and asked for a fan so I could like cool down the, the room a little bit. It kind of worked. The next best one would be the Red Carpet Inn. This one had everything that I was looking for except for a microwave. So I had a fridge, a coffee maker. I had AC in the unit that I could turn on. I had heating in the unit that I could turn on. It was spacious, it was clean. The hot tub was really great too. The 
Jets were super strong. They really like dig into your back and the proximity to a bar that has happy hour is super great. I, I re really enjoyed going over there, having a couple of drinks before going out and doing other things later on that night. It was really, really nice. So I really enjoyed this one a lot and that's why it gets that ranking. Next would be the Ptarmigan. This hotel had air conditioning inside of it. It had heating inside of it. There was a mini fridge. I don't believe that there was a microwave. It had lots of towels. It was nice and clean. The soap and everything was all stocked and ready to go. So I loved that. Location was really great. I could run down to IGA, go grab myself some lunch every single day. So that way I had fresh food to eat and I even got like juice and stuff, put that in the mini fridge, got some drinks. Yeah, it was honestly a great place. I really liked that it had a dry and wet sauna, and then also that it had two different hot tubs, so that way there's not just one, so if there are more people there, then more people can go to the hot tub and you're not just stuck like in the hot tub with random people. The second best hotel coming in second place is going to be the Bellevue Lodge. So this was the first hotel I stayed at and it's absolutely great. I loved the size of the room. I loved the feel and look of it and everything. It was really quality for how much money I paid for it. And one thing to mention, they even included mouthwash on the sink. So there was mouthwash, which was something I didn't have the first night that I arrived there. So I was so happy that they had mouthwash because I like I have toothpaste and a toothbrush, but I just didn't bring mouthwash because it's kind of too heavy to take on a plane and everything. There was so much space in this room. There was two different air conditioning and heating units. The beds were super comfortable. I like this little table that they had in the dining area. There was a mini fridge, there was a microwave. They had a sink that was available. They had silverware if you need it. Uh, so pretty much everything that you need, you could have gotten in this hotel room. The night that I got there, the, the pool and spa were already closed at the Banff Park Lodge. So when you stay at the Bellevue Lodge, you have access to the Banff Park Lodge Pool and Spa. This one is super surprising that even though it was the cheapest place that I stayed at, it was honestly one of the best places. The only one that beat it is going to be the Dorothy Motel. So the Dorothy Motel was the last place that I stayed at. The room felt super clean and fresh and like really modern. I loved the shower. The heated floors were my favorite part. There was a mini fridge, there was a microwave, there's a A&W right in front of there, so if you want any food, you can go there. There's also a convenience store, like in a gas station. So if you need any sort of like essentials, you can always go over to the gas station and get all of that. And then another cute thing about it is that you get to take home a cup once you're done, once you stay there. You get a free cup. It says the Dorothy Motel, Banff National Park. There we go. The Dorothy Motel, Banff National Park. So that was really cute, a nice souvenir. Even though this one was kind of far out of the way to go all the way downtown, there's plenty of buses around. Most of these hotels, you get the complimentary bus tickets. So taking the bus is really easy. And with Dorothy, there was bus tickets. So. The bus stop was just right up the road, right in front of the A&W, literally right in front of the A&W. So it was really easy to just walk a minute and go to the bus stop and then just take the bus all the way downtown instead of walking. If you did want to walk, it's probably going to be like a 15, 20 minute walk, depending on how fast you walk. But yeah, this was by far my favorite place and I'm definitely going to go back to it when I go back to Banff. The Dorothy and the Bovey Lodge are my top two picks for staying inside of Banff with Dorothy winning overall just because of like the heated floors and everything else was just absolutely perfect. I did want to mention with Dorothy, you do also get access to the Caribou Lodge pool and spa. So if you did want to go do that, you could just walk over there changing to your swim clothes or whatever, and you could enjoy the pool and everything at the Caribou Lodge. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that if you are traveling with any sort of like service animals or anything like that, there is like a $25 fee every single day for each animal at these hotels. So unfortunately I wasn't able to bring my cats with me and service animals aren't recognized in Alberta, Canada. So just be aware of this if you are traveling with any pets that you will have to pay extra. So yeah, that's all for this video. Let me know which hotel you think looks the best to you. And are you planning to go to Banff anytime soon? 
If you are and you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave them below. I hope you liked this video of all of the Banff hotels I stayed at and happy traveling. Bye.